Do we know more about the world of technology, particularly the longevity of this AI investment cycle, than we did prior to NVIDIA's earnings print just a few days ago? Well, uh, thank you for having me here. So to start, uh, one, demand remains very strong, and we're at the very early stages. Uh, when we say demand is strong, so we're seeing it across hyperscaler, we're seeing it from enterprises, and we're seeing it from uh, nations as well. So at this stage, and then with new product coming, you start to see, you continue to see very robust demand for existing product. That's something actually we've never seen before in previous product cycles. So that's a strong signal. And then two, when we say early stages, is yes, uh, it's early stages, particularly on the supply side. We're going from manufacturing a single chip to system level compute. So a lot of things have to come together, whether it be memory, networking, software, and even on the infrastructure side, the power, the cooling. So a lot of it has to come together, and the ecosystem itself on the manufacturing side has to adapt. So there will be unevenness from time to time. And uh, so go back to there is a demand supply imbalance, but we remain very constructive on the outlook of AI. Lay uh, Alliance Bernstein, based on Bloomberg's data at least, is the 22nd largest shareholder of NVIDIA. Just generally your reaction to the earnings statement call and basically the whole watch party that was happening for that name around the world. Uh, we, we believe that NVIDIA remain one of the uh, leading players in the AI ecosystem. What they're doing is transformative. And it is early. So when you look at innovation and this early in the product cycle, you will see quarter to quarter perhaps a little bit unevenness. But as we believe, sometimes you have to look out to even make money near term or long term. So we continue to have a constructive view on the AI ecosystem as a whole. And we believe in NVIDIA's uh, leading position as well. Lei, I can only imagine how often at a cocktail party or dinner party you are taken to one side and grilled over really what the return on AI investment really is. Everyone's trying to understand when generative AI is really going to change all our lives. What do you say to that? Um, first, I would say, um, one, it's about accelerated compute. It's a new form of compute that's far more efficient and powerful. And when you look at the existing players, the hyperscalers, they're using it to support their current business model. So if you look at infrastructure as a service in the cloud, you're seeing they're spending because Azure is growing, AWS is growing, GCP is growing. So that's one use case. And then two, in some of the existing industries, whether it be advertising or life science uh, or autonomous driving for that matter, you are starting to see general AI actually make a positive impact already. And uh, we actually believe this is a great time for active investing mm. because this is a time we can use it to identify the future winners and leaders because it is an opportunity when such a transformative product cycle happens, you redefine who are the future winners and leaders. It's a once-in-a-lifetime once opportunity for these players to actually get into each other's uh, backyard. So we actually think you're going to see more and more business model emerging. We always say, sometimes you take a step back. Without the build out the mobile ecosystem, yeah. we wouldn't have had Uber, Spotify, Facebook for that matter. So we wouldn't have had the sub suburbs if we didn't build a highway. Right. It's still early. And uh, we believe the infrastructure build out itself is already supporting some of the existing business models. And we're watching very closely across industries to, new, to see new business model actually emerging. But what's so interesting, you've been doing this since 1999, 2000, many people go back to Cisco in those years and ultimately how far it ran up and this focus on one particular name, but indeed the entire tech sector. Is there just too much focus on a singular name like NVIDIA? When do we start to broaden out? When do we not get the ultimate crash that we saw back in, in the 1999, 2000s run up? Yes, I agree. Um, you know, the market is hyper-focused on one name, but we are focused on the entire ecosystem. In fact, we think there are a lot of opportunities outside. If take a supply chain, for example. If we take a step back and then think at high level, there's such supply demand imbalance. The demand remains so robust, and uh, we are having supply chain issues. So one can say that when there is such imbalance between demand supply, there's pricing power, the new profit pools. And then also with AI, we're really redefining the future business models. So you can actually find future winners and losers. So it is not just on one stock, it's rather the accelerated compute, the impact on the future 
of technology and, frankly, the future of economic growth. Lei, I tried to speak to Jensen Wang about the energy component of the supply chain. Let's listen to what he said. The most important thing that we do is increase the performance of and increase the performance and efficiency of our next generation. So Blackwell is many times more performant than Hopper at the same level of power used. And so that's energy efficiency. More performance with the same amount of power or same performance at a lower power. Jensen looks at the energy component through the lens of Blackwell's greater efficiency. How do you look at the energy component of accelerated computing? We certainly are very constructive on the energy efficiency of the future of compute, but we also are constructive on the physical instructor aspect of it. When we look at how the data centers will be powered and so much greenfield power is actually needed. So we're quite constructive on the physical instructor of it. In fact, if you take a step back and think about the digital infrastructure has actually leapfrogged the physical infrastructure of many developed nations. And we find many interesting plays there as well. Lei, how do you balance all of this? The chaos around NVIDIA earnings, a single name, all of the central banks speak and all of the economic data in one week. What was that like for you and all the things crossing your desk? Well, that's the excitement uh, about being an innovation investor. We focus on the secular story, the s stories that's going to uh, drive stocks, fundamentals, regardless of what central bank will do. So we always go back to in 2008, iPhone still sold. So irrespective of economic cycle, when we focus on fundamentals, that's what active investment is about. We find stories that will grow irrespective of cyclical backdrop. So if you're looking active at the moment and you see the run-up in valuation of certain companies that we've all become completely euphoric around, how do you broaden that out? You said look at the, you know, the supply side. Am I automatically thinking, OK, go global here, look at a TSMC, look at some of the Japanese suppliers that feed into an NVIDIA? How are you looking at the broader wealth of opportunities that are outside just certain big MAG7 names? We go back to the fundamentals. We're active investors. So we look at each company with, its own, with respect to its own growth opportunity. Obviously, at a high level, we are thematic investors. We look at how big the secular trend is. Then we look at the demand supply imbalance and the longevity of it. And then we do look at it at a global level and find who are the future winners and losers. Again, go back to it is a time of change, a time of inflection. And when time of inflection, sometimes we will find that market will underestimate some of the growth opportunities of different parts of the supply chain. And that's what we focus on. One stock at a time and how, how, how strong the growth momentum is. And more importantly, are they going to get majority of the future profit pool? How the industry is being reshaped? That's what we focus on. You talk about this highway and everyone is really focused on the infrastructure play. But everyone's trying to work out, particularly the VC community, where the value is in the applications. You talked about healthcare, about advertising already, adopting generative AI. But where are some of those long-term opportunities? Where's being undervalued and underappreciated? And where can adopt generative AI? So at a high level, I would say we are still early. And being an innovation investor, sometimes it does require a touch of imagination, if you will, <laughs> because the future has yet to come. The future is the best part of it. But I would also point to, we are already seeing, this, is, this, this time is a little bit different. So if you look back the past 15 years, it's about the consumer electronics. You're seeing the killer app. We call them the killer app simply because we can touch and feel. But that said, this one is about the infrastructure upgrade. So it's less obvious, but that doesn't mean it, the opportunity is not as big. When we look forward, we can see the digital manufacturing. When we think about the reshoring, how much are we going to need on the automation side? And then also the future of robotics. Those are some of the areas that we think we're going to see a lot of great opportunities ahead.